Hi, welcome back to my channel and my video ranking all of the films in the Omen franchise. So we've just recently had this first Omen prequel to the original and leading up to the release of that I watched all of the movies again in the franchise. Some I hadn't seen before, some were re-watches after years. Uh, so I wanted to get all of my thoughts out on the movies here together in one ranking. Uh, not my favourite set of movies I have to say. I think... Only the top two, I would say, are movies I'd ever go back to out of choice to re-watch. The rest of them, I've got very mixed feelings on, as we'll get into. But, you know, there are still some interesting elements here. I get why some people do really like them, but... Yeah, so anyway, please do let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments. Do you like the Omen franchise? What order would you put the movies in? Let me know all your thoughts on that down below. So we've got six movies to talk about here and let's get into the list. Okay, right at the bottom at number six, easily the worst of this group of movies, is The Omen for The Awakening. This was uh, a really lame rehash of the original film. You know, I think this came about 10 years after the third movie and it is a desperate attempt to try and regenerate interest in this franchise and get another series of sequels going again. And this movie fails on just about every single level. You know, Gone is all of that amazing atmosphere set up in the original uh, it doesn't bring anything new to the mythology here. And rather than having all of the really subtle supernatural elements from the first film, where it could kind of be an analogy to, you know, kind of mental health and all these other really kind of subtle themes... There's nothing like that here at all. This is all in your face. You know, you've got upside down crosses in front of your face. You've got healing crystals, changing colour, <laughs> all this ridiculous stuff that just uh, was not engaging me at all. Uh, it, it's a movie that's almost impossible to review because it's it's on the line of unwatchable just because of how badly done this movie really is. Like it actually is laughable in spots like about 30 minutes in I suddenly like I didn't realize if this was registering in my mind I suddenly started noticing the ridiculous choice of music that had been put with this movie and I was just like has this been has this been on the whole time and it was when it was that scene where the woman who finds out the bit of information about Delia and as she gets pushed out of that window and she lands on the roundabout spinning and suddenly it's just really in your face, this over-the-top cartoonish music, completely out of tone with an Omen film. And I was just like, what am I watching? So the best thing I think I can say about this is there is a twist reveal towards the end, which was entertaining, I guess, to watch. But that's as far as I could go in terms of pros for this movie. So this is a... A terrible film, a terrible sequel, and one that you should avoid at all costs. Number five, we've got Omen Part 3, The Final Conflict. And this is where we're following Damien now as an adult, who is played by Sam Neill. And he is this very high up CEO, he's, the, he's an ambassador. And I'm guessing this is how they explain the fact that he has almost like this cult following of Satan worshippers, kind of following his every move. And... I think there was something really lost in this movie, the fact that we're following Damien as an adult. There was something about the drama in the original two of the fact that you have parents dealing with the fact that their, their child might be evil, that there might be something seriously wrong with them, and you can kind of get into the the inner turmoil of them not really knowing how to deal with it. You know, the fact they don't want to believe this thing, despite the signs that something is very wrong. And obviously you don't have that here at all. You're just watching a guy in his 30s or 40s just carrying out evil evil deeds. And it's like, okay. But, you know, I, I felt like the drama that makes those original Omen films just isn't here anymore. There is some entertaining moments here, but... I, again, I think like the way a lot of the staging of the death scenes, like the fourth movie, a lot of it's quite laughable. Like there's a particular scene where um, Damien is being cornered on a bridge by these people who know who he is and have brought the, the daggers that can kill him. And the way they get off is just, yeah, it, again, it's just laughable. It's cheaply done. Uh, it's not convincing in the slightest and it ends up just being a little bit funny. Uh, so that didn't work for me. So you've got the story here about Damien realising that there's going to be this second coming of Christ, which, you know, these Omen movies, they are taking place within the worldview that 
the Christian religion is all true, like all the mythology is true. So I guess it's fitting you would have that. You know, you've got the devil and Satan and, and the Antichrist, and I guess you'd have Jesus come to stop them. Um, there's something about just the way that plays out in a movie that came from an original that's trying to sort of be grounded. Just something about it comes across a little bit off. Like when you get that final scene and Damien's down on his knees and you've got the man himself shows up, you know, actual glowing Jesus in front of him. And then we cut to all these Bible passages. I was just like, what was that ending? Like something about it to me, I thought just came across really silly. So uh, I didn't like that at all as a conclusion uh, to this trilogy of films. And, you know, there are some entertaining moments throughout this, but, and, and again, it's not as bad as four, but uh, it's not a movie that I'm ever planning to rewatch again. Okay, number four now, we've got The Omen 2. And this is still not a good movie. I, I'm... <laughs> This movie, I was so surprised to see the reviews, how forgiving people really are of this movie. And when you look at reviews of like modern horror films, people are so harsh. And I'm like, you watch The Omen 2 and I'm like, is this really worthy of all this praise? I don't think it is. This, this movie, again, it just doesn't have that atmosphere and the, the things that make the first film much special in my opinion The Omen 2 just doesn't have uh, it doesn't take the story in an interesting new direction it's basically just a continuation you know with relatives now looking after this teenage Damien and it's you know crazy stuff starts to happen and people slowly start to see things that are wrong and trying and are trying to get to the bottom of it and it feels like in this movie, because none of the effort has gone into the atmosphere, a lot of it has been redirected into getting these ridiculous over-the-top kill sequences. Like there's a particular scene in an elevator with a guy getting that the guy getting sawn in half, which, you know, it's an entertaining sequence, but that's the most memorable thing about the film, and that isn't what's gonna make it stand the test of time. So, you know, it feels like way too much of the focus went into stuff like that rather than you know, creating an interesting new direction to take the story here and really bringing back that sense of dread that the first movie has that is just completely missing here. Um, there are some things I liked about it. I think Teenage Damien is good. I think the actor's pretty creepy and I do like uh, some of the moments with him. I don't really understand why... So there's a bit in the story in the middle where he has the sort of awareness that he has something wrong with him, that he might be this Antichrist child and he's kind of asking why he's been chosen, like, why am I the one that's, having, that's been picked to go through this? And I thought that'd been quite, that would have been quite an interesting direction to go, like this, this young boy who's having to deal with being aware of the fact that he's been possessed or whatever, and I think that would have been quite a cool direction to go, but it's never really mentioned again. It's just like, after that, he's pure evil, doesn't question anything again, and that's it. That's the last we get of that. So the one interesting element brought in is just done away with so we never get to see that again and other than that and I did like the ending to be fair I did like the ending I thought the final little twist thing that happens in the final moments was quite effective uh, it, it's an okay film you know it's not got the incompetences of the original of the sorry of uh, three and four uh, it's not as embarrassing or uh, laughable as those movies like it's definitely watchable but not a good movie though, come on, it's not a great movie. <laughs> Number three now, we've got the Omen remake, the 2006 remake. This is kind of a difficult one for me because I, I didn't really realise that this movie is a, a, a remake in the sense that basically every single scene is exactly the same, like it's literally the same script. Some of the scenes even have com the, all of the same dialogue, like it plays out, there's no surprises in here at all. And... To me, it's like there's a couple of reasons in my mind to do a remake. You know, if you've got, if you want to do something new and interesting with a concept that works, great, I'm all for that. They've done that a number of times. They you know, did that with Child's Play. I thought that really worked. And also, if you've had a movie, say if you've had a movie in the past that had a really great idea, but just the movie wasn't very good for whatever reason, okay, cool, like remake that. That's a good idea. But here, We've got a remake to a movie which I don't remember there ever being that much demand for a scene for scene remake of the original Omen. Did, like, did people need to see that done again? I'm not sure they did, so I don't really understand the reason for this movie existing. Um, 
I didn't I didn't dislike it though. Like if I hadn't seen the original, this would be fine. I I'd, I'd still I'd probably have gone positive in my review for it. And they've added a couple of small details here, like there's a couple of dream sequences that Julia Stiles' character has where uh, you know, the one in particular where she's in the bath and she's got her wrists are slit and she sees Damon, Damien looking in. That was quite a creepy moment. I liked some of those moments. And there's bits like that where you can tell with more modern filmmaking techniques. Uh, there's there's moments that have more intensity to them, I think, which work quite well. And, you know, I like all the actors. I think uh, Lee Schreiber and Julia Stiles are good. L Julia Stiles is actually better than Lee Remick, I think, just because... I feel like you get more of a sense of what her character's going through. Like she doesn't obviously she doesn't have a lot to do in the story. There's not that much development of her character before she's offed. Um but I feel like Julia Stiles, you're you're in her mind a little bit more, uh, rather than the version that Lee Remick portrayed. So there are a couple of things about it that it does better, but all of the impact was just lost for me. When I was watching this and I was realising that it's just exactly the same film, uh, I knew exactly what was coming and all the powerful moments just didn't, that are, what are meant to be powerful, just didn't hit me at all. So it's not a terrible movie. Again, if I'd never seen the original, this would be fine. But as it is, I just see no reason for this movie existing. So at number two, I'm going with The First Omen, the prequel to the original. And it's at this point, this movie and the obvious number one, uh, are the ones that I would genuinely go back and re-watch. Really good movies that I would genuinely recommend. You could see these two happily and you could never go without ever seeing any of the others and be completely fine with that. Um, I was really impressed by this movie. I think this one does the best job of recapturing that atmosphere from the original film. You know, it's got a really sort of sinister feel about it, the way it sets up. Uh, this convent with these nun characters, it feels sinister. There is that kind of sense of dread about it, which I really liked. And, you know, just from a filmmaking perspective, the acting, everything like that, immerses you in the story, it really convinces you. And it's just, yeah, it's just a very eerie setting and something about it really does pull you in. Something I really liked as well is obviously you get a bit of the mythology about the fact that you know, Damien was born of the the jackal with the woman and all, all that, the demonic version of the jackal and whatever. And obviously it's only ever talked about in theory. But here they actually do, uh, they go some way to actually kind of visually show you creature design and stuff like that surrounding that mythology. And I loved all of that stuff. That really worked me. Again, it brought like a new, some new level of intensity to the movies that have never been seen in the Omen films before, which I really liked. Like there's a particular scene involving a hand, which if you've read anything about this movie, you've already heard about. It's pretty wild. It looks insane. And yeah, it's a pretty impressive scene. I have to say, I really like what they did with that. You know, obviously this movie is going to be compared a lot to Immaculate, the Sydney Sweeney nun movie. The fact that within like two weeks of release dates, we got two identical nun movies. Like the first half of Immaculate and the first half of this are literally the same movie. Like They're, they're genuinely so similar. I, I can't actually believe it. I do think though, this is definitely the better of the two. It's the better made film. The ending of Immaculate has kind of stuck with me quite a bit, but I do think overall I still enjoyed this film a lot more. And really, the only things I didn't like, there's two things I didn't like about this. One of them is the, the there's a twist reveal in the middle. Again, I'm not going to spoil anything here just because this is the newest film and some people might not have seen it, but there's a twist reveal in the middle which was painfully obvious to me and I didn't really like the way the movie was treating that as a twist uh, something about that just felt a bit off to me I didn't I didn't particularly like that there could have been a more subtle way to bring that story element in in a natural way I think rather than it being this oh it's a twist reveal you know I didn't really like that and again the other problem is the ending you know it, where it was going I, I really liked I love the whole kind of finale sequence and the way it seemingly is leading into the events of the original I really liked how they did that and to kind of have now this interesting backstory to um, the, the first movie and how those events began everything I thought was great but they decided to add this little thing on at the end as well which is like oh there's actually another load of events that are running concurrent with the events of the original movie and it's 
it, it feels pretty clear to me the reason they're doing that is they want to have opportunities to make sequels if this movie does well. And to me, I just hate movies doing that. Loads of movies in the past have done that and have been worse off for it. It's like sometimes you want to make one complete story, one and done, close it off and, and let it be judged based on that. And I think it would have worked a lot better. Whereas there's something about leaving a movie in the final scene, leaving you like, oh, why did they have to do that? It kind of puts me off. Whereas like Immaculate, not the best movie, but the final scene is fantastic and left me on a high. So sometimes having a powerful, really uh, strong last scene can really leave that, that kind of positive impression on you. And then sometimes with movies like this, they do a, a cheap ending like that and it just it just leaves you a little bit disappointed. So if they'd have fixed that, this could easily have been up there with my number one choice. And my number one, my favourite movie from the Omen franchise is the original 1976 movie. And I've done a full review for this film with all of my thoughts, which I'll link you here if you want, if you want me to go fully like in depth with it. But, you know, I'm not, I, I like this movie a lot. I really do like it. It's never been one of my favourites though. And, you know, my, the obvious comparison really is to The Exorcist, given that they're dealing with similar themes and they came out a few years apart. And both of them I rewatched in the lot in, in fairly recent times. And I have to say The Exorcist is a better film. I just think it's more intriguing in the way it deals with certain things and just pulls me in a bit more. But I definitely understand why people love The Omen. I think it's got just such a fantastic atmosphere. You know, the way it sets up quite light-hearted and then just at a certain point, it, the, there's something in the air that just lets you know that something is very wrong uh, going on within this story. And I just love that kind of dynamic, the atmosphere and the way that plays out. And again, I, I was saying earlier in this in this ranking about the fact that a lot of the drama going on is about the fact that these two parents are dealing with a situation where their child might be evil there might be something seriously seriously wrong with him and it's such a disturbing thought they don't even know how to come to terms with it so I think some of the more interesting scenes is where uh, Lee Remick's character is really starting to lose it and obviously Gregory Peck he goes to her psychiatrist and finds out that she's been kind of she thinks she's been having these kind of delusions that Damien's a baby or is from somewhere else or isn't hers and stuff and all oh, so all those little elements just make it all the more creepy I think I do like the movie just for some reason there's something that holds me back from really loving it and again maybe it's one that I'll you know rewatch a few more times and I'll, and I'll get more from it because I definitely liked it a lot more on this most recent rewatch but Overall, I do think this is a very solid movie still, still highly recommended if you've never seen it before. And for me, it's still definitely the best in the Omen franchise. So that's all of my thoughts for you on the Omen films. Please do let me know down in the comments if you agree with my list. What's your favourite movie? What do you think's the worst in the franchise? All of your thoughts, please do let me know down below. And also, please do consider subscribing to my channel if you've been enjoying my content. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.